Let me begin by saying thanks everyone for joining today. I'm really glad you're here. My name is John Busby. I'm the CMO of Centerfield and we're presenting this alongside Sivan Social and Savings.com. So why are we doing this summit? Uh, we're doing it for a few reasons. Uh, first, as consumers, we're increasingly making purchase decisions based on recommendations from people that we trust or like. And because we spend a lot of time online or on social media and consuming content, our favorite follows are a huge source of inspiration. Second reason is as marketers, and I consider myself one, um, it can feel mysterious or confusing to create relationships with creators or influencers. And that's a big question we hear at Centerfield from brands that we work with. And third, finally, from conversations with creators and influencers, it can be equally mysterious or confusing. So we're here to break that down and discuss that. Um, if you stick with us through the program today, um, you'll know that we'll be having, having conversations with brands, with influencers, with, with a mix in a bunch of panels, but who better to start with uh, for the Influencer Marketing Summit than with Instagram, I'm Instagram, and I'm thrilled to introduce Tiffany Matlou. Hi, Tiffany, how are you? I'm great. I'm so excited to be here with everyone and hopefully share some great takeaways that help you guys continue to build your businesses. I would love that. Um, before we start chatting, I mentioned this at the outset, but a bunch of folks are still signing in. You can all ask Tiffany questions in the q and I'll be monitoring those and, and asking them to for, for uh, asking them of Tiffany. Some tips for questions. We don't want to uh, diagnose specific accounts. <laughs> let's, let's handle those things offline, but, uh, but I'll be asking questions on topics that are applicable to everyone. Um, something that, that you all should know is, uh, is it, as a thank you um, for our speakers donating uh, their time today, we're making a donation to the charity of, of their choice. And so Tiffany, would you mind letting everyone know the charity that you chose and, and why? Yeah, so I chose Friendship Circle, and it's a nonprofit organization whose goal is to provide every individual with special needs support, friendship, and inclusion. And they have amazing recreational, social, educational, vocational programming for them. Um, for me, a big part of my job is community building, and I want I love the mission that they have, and I want to spread that community building to everyone and allow everyone to have that opportunity. So I thought this was the perfect organization to contribute to. I love that. Uh, thanks for that. So um, I'd, love to, I'd love to start out, if you don't mind, telling a little bit about your story and background. As we were getting to know each other, I, I, I learned that you were on the red carpet sometimes. You, you've, you've been a journalist. What, what led up to you working at, at, uh, at Instagram? Yeah, I mean, I have always been obsessed with entertainment and celebrity and knowing that latest scoop. And when I first started, there weren't really a lot of opportunities for people to break and become a star. It was just those traditional paths of being on a television show or being in a movie. And so as I was interviewing a lot of these talents, I saw that there was like this opportunity for people to be discovered in other ways that wasn't identified yet. And that's when I when I moved from that, I went to Sweetie High, which was basically this platform to help provide these types of opportunities to teen girls. I'm a teen at heart. I feel like I will never stop being a teen. And even the work that I do today lines up with that because I love knowing what is pushing culture forward, what this community is all about. So when I worked with them, I found that there were ways to bridge this gap with people who weren't in traditional media and provide them with opportunities, whether it's in entertainment, whether it's in fashion, beauty, whatever they're passionate about. And at the time, celebrities were also trying to build their profiles apart from being on TV and being in movies because they knew there was that 15 seconds of fame might run up. And how do they continue to build their brands beyond that? That's when I joined Spin Media and really helped build out their celebrity program, which was about building their social media profiles and websites. So apps still weren't, you know, as big in terms of being able to do branded content and make money. So a lot of talent made their money off of having a website and getting the revenue from that. As social media began to grow and become bigger, we realized there's an opportunity for apps to now take this real estate and help these creators who are now coming into the space 
build their brands. And that's when I joined Musical.ly, which was all about celebrating these teens and helping them break and get to the next level and have opportunities that they didn't have before. And before that, I was at Digitour actually, where we took these stars on tour. So it's like beyond just being on these apps, what are the opportunities outside of being on Musical.ly, TikTok now, um, Instagram, all of the social media platforms? What are opportunities to take them on tour so they can build more of a community. And so a big part of my job has always been community building. And that's what eventually brought me to Instagram. And what I love about my job now is helping these creators who have broken build their business. And what are opportunities for branded content and to collaborate with other creators and to not just have um, short form video, but build across like, IGTV, which is amazing, going live, being able to showcase themselves in different formats so they can reach a wider, bigger community. And now I help build that community at Instagram, focusing on reels and help these creators who are emerging find opportunities. I know I, I host on at creators start real star search, which is about showcasing these amazing creators that we're finding expressing themselves and who are really passionate about different verticals within the entertainment space. So that's cooking, DIY, sports, fashion. So it's been really fun helping build this uh, community of aspiring and emerging creators at Instagram. I, lo I love that. And um, we all know that Instagram is a major, major, huge platform. Are there any, any kind of stats or figures that, <laughs> that will blow our mind about how big Instagram is now? Yeah, there are over 1 billion accounts on Instagram right now. So that's a lot of people. And, you know, creators really have the opportunity to reach a diverse audience across all ages, across all interests and countries. So that's really, really exciting about Instagram. And that's why this is the place to be for brands. I mean, you're connecting to all these creators across the world. It's really fun and exciting. Okay, so I'm going to ask questions from the perspective of of a brand. You know, I, I haven't. I'm one of those billion Instagram users, but I'm kind of the post pictures of my kid style of Instagram user. My biggest influencer moment was when I tried to get a coffee shop down the street to have a 20 ounce drip coffee, and um, and ultimately that failed for me. But that was my <laughs> my attempt. So uh, so. Like if um if I if I want want to be a creator, let's say what what's new? I know you just hosted um, Creator Week and and focusing a lot on on reels, but like what's what's new and exciting from a creator standpoint? Yeah, so Creator Week was phenomenal. The programming was the best in terms of how do you build your business? And I think a lot of creators they break and they wonder now how do I have a merch line? How do I get press? How do I get opportunities? to continue to grow on the platform and beyond. And so I really loved the sessions we had. We had everything from, you know, building clout, funding my merch line. One of my favorites was um, one that we had from getting products to getting paid because a lot of times creators tell us, I just have a bunch of brands saying like, I'll give you free product, but how do I go from just getting free stuff to actually making money and making this my business? Bessie Donna from our creator team led that. And she had some amazing creators. Come on, Victoria Lynn, Catch Meeks if you can, Flawless Kevin. And they talked about the no negotiation secrets, like tips and tricks that they use. And one of my favorite things is talk about the things that you love and are already passionate about, for brands to see that you organically love it. I mean, I'm a La Cologne fan. I talk about this all the time on my Instagram. I have it every day. And so many times people will slide into my DMs and tell me, Tiffany, I got a La Cologne oat black and tan because of you. So when you're passionate and excited about something, people can feel that. And our tools on Instagram are all about helping people feel empowered to share things that they're passionate about, especially Reels. Reels is that place where you can create that entertaining short form content that can reach this global diverse audience no matter what your passion is. So I did a reel where I talked about my morning routine of going to La Cologne and, or I did one where there's a influencer called the fitness marshal who talks about fitness and getting, you know, um, ready to go. And he's like, why do we exercise so much? And then I did a remix reel, which is another feature that we have on reels that I 
think you guys should all check out because it's super fun to that saying so I could eat all this food and I just posted all these different clips of me eating different food and that did so well and I'm just a normal person I'm not an influencer so for anyone who wants to break in, I would say Reels is the go-to destination because there's a Reels tab. There's a dedicated space where you can go and find creators who are creating great content being surfaced right there. I mean, I go there when it comes to Real Star Search for finding the next great talent. I have a creator that I work with as well, Nina Marie Danielle. She started as a model, like that was her trade. And she's like, I need to continue to build my brand. So she started doing reels, comedy content. She directs, she writes, she produces all her reels. Ridiculousness, MTV's Ridiculousness found her on reels and put her on the show because she was expressing herself and doing comedy skits as like the relatable older sister that like we all know and love. So there really is an opportunity for people to figure out what their niche is and what they're passionate about. Another creator that I think about is Labco. He, his name is Nassim and he does amazing cooking videos. We had him on Real Star Search too. But I think the change and the shift is it went from being you would see a lot of content of people's hands making food, but you would never see the personality. You're like, who is behind this content that I'm seeing? And it was very like the object and not about the person. And especially during this time, it's so important for people to connect with people. And that's what Instagram is really facilitating is that relationship between the influencer creator and their fan or supporters and community. And so he now you know, shows himself in the beginning, like, this is how we're going to make this amazing avocado toast with my, you know, Moroccan spin on it. And then he goes in and shows and people have connected to him as a creator versus just seeing him make the food and, and go. So I think right now reels is the number one place. I need to see some reels from you. We're waiting on that, John. So let me know when you post your first reel. Okay. Well, um, the audience may may not be shocked that I did not start out as a model. So, but but e but even so, um, yes, I should give it a try. <laughs> All right, can you talk about the importance or or lack thereof of 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 verification? Like as like as a brand, if someone's verified or someone's not not verified, how should I think about that? If I'm a creator, how should I think about that? Um, can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I would say that verification is about notability. It doesn't have to do with how amazing your content is. And so a lot of times I want people to don't think about verification as something that like you need to prove that you've made it. There are so many incredible creators. Verification is just a safety check. Like if people are impersonating you um, and making sure that your account is protected. But there are so many amazing creators that are doing incredible work. And so I would say, verification is there but don't focus that as like the i made it moment think about the audience that you're getting think about how who you're reaching how you're building your content plan to make this community more excited about what you are creating on instagram rather than you know getting these vanity badges it really is an opportunity for you to collaborate with so many different people. And I would say not to focus on that, to focus on the content, because at the end of the day, content is king and the right people will find you. Um, the people who are meant to see that content, if you post across the surfaces, they will be able to discover you and opt into your community. And they will, if the content is good, they will stay there. They're not going to go. When creators ask me, they're like, Tiffany, how many should I be posting a day? And I think about some of my favorite creators. I would consume content until, you know, the cows come home if they kept posting it because I love, I think about, you know, there's a podcast that I listen to called Do Up and they just did the Apple subscription. And I was thinking, oh, like, do I want to subscribe to this? And then I saw them post this new episode today and I was driving to my coffee shop. I'm like, I really want this episode. So I, I paid for the subscription. So when the content is good and you love the creators behind it, you will opt into that experience. And I, I think of myself as like the mainstream girl. Like if I do, I feel like a lot of people will do it. And that's why um, I always say, Think about what you're putting out into the universe and less about like, I need this, I need that, I need that um, when it comes to building your brand on Instagram. All right, that makes sense. Um, so I wanna ask you some questions about, about brands, but I had a, a really good question come in through, through the Q&A that I'd like to 
I'd like to ask. And um, and so how do you recommend or do you recommend that creators go about contacting brands that they're interested in in partnering with? You know, you you said on your own on your own feed you have a bunch of products and brands that you really like. What how how might you recommend taking the next step? Yeah, I mean, during the panel that was at Creator Week, Catch Meeks if you can, amazing account, definitely go follow her. She talked about how you should organically talk about the product. Like if it's something you love and are excited about, talk about the product, tag the product, tag the brand, because then the brand will find you and they'll want to work with you. I have, I know I said I wasn't an influencer, but back in the day, I had an account called Pumpkinita, which was a seasonal pumpkin spice account. And what I would do is when there was a brand that I was really excited about, because I would like talk about different pumpkin spice goodies, I would go and tag them. And I think about Maxine's Heavenly, which you guys have probably seen at Whole Foods or Erewhon, which is this amazing vegan chocolate chip cookie. They even have it in the Facebook offices. So it's, you know, blown up since, but I had just seen it and I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to review this because I want to tell my community about this pumpkin spice product. And I tag them and they reached out to me and like, we are obsessed with you. We want to work with you. And it's really that simple. You know, people want to work with people who are excited about the product. They don't want it to feel like you're trying to like, sell something that you're not passionate about just for the money. And so I think the number one thing, I know a lot of creators that I work with, they will post about it, tag them, and the brands will contact them because they see that the content does well. It's like they're already getting proof of concept that this will succeed. And vice versa, a lot of brands like will reach out to creators that they love too and send PR boxes and then do more than that as well if they see that wow like look at this audience they're really engaging with this content so it is about seeing what are the creators passionate what are the brands passionate about and is there a fit there and I always say empower the creator to like go after the things you want you know I I always say sell yourself Instagram is like the best place for people to know what you're excited about and passionate about. And there are so many surfaces to do that. So that's how I even connect with my colleagues and know what, you know, they are excited and passionate about. So that if I see something like, oh, I'm going to get this for them because I know that they love this product or this item. So that is truly like the best way to do is slide into those DMs. Don't be afraid. (laughs) All right. That sounds, that sounds good. That is good advice. I had a question come in as as a, a marketer that really really gets to the to the heart of the matter for me, and it will probably be on a lot of brands' minds and also creators' minds. So, and it's a, it's a it's about metrics. So I do something, you know, I'm, I'm uh, I do something with a creator. What do you what do you hear back as far as like the most important metrics to track? beyond beyond views or beyond likes. Do you have any feedback on that for, for both sides, for the creator and the brand? Yeah, I think it's comments. Like, are they in there engaging with the creator? Are they asking more questions about what they just shared? Are they, what kind of people are interacting with this content? Because likes doesn't really give you context about what they think about the post. It really is like, for instance, when I, post my law cologne, a lot of people will be like, where'd you get that? What is that drink? What goes into it? I know that these people are engaged and really excited about it. So I think comments are definitely number one, because you can see like, are they digging deeper to learn more about what that creator is sharing? And also vice versa, is a creator going back and sharing more information with them to get them even more excited about it? And I think like now it's like the best time where we're seeing that smaller micro influencer usually has even more impact than that person with 2 million followers. And so like seeing how they engage and seeing their community and seeing, do they engage with this creator in a way where they know them? Like, this is my friend. I will trust whatever they tell me about. I want to know about what they're excited about. Or is it like more of a lean back approach where they're not really engaging in that meaningful way with the creator? That's like the number one thing. I always give the example, like I used to have a podcast and we would have some creators that had over 2 million followers on there. And then we would have people with 6,000 followers, you know, and It was surprising, but not so surprising that the ones that got the most listened and were shared the most and got 
people subscribing, writing comments were the people who had the smaller followings, but who were engaging with their community every day. They were in the comments, they were responding, they were responding to the DMs. And so everyone was so connected and wanted to know so badly what this creator was going to say on this podcast. And that's what really builds that strength within the creator community is that connection and that contact between the creator and the community that they built. That's a great answer. Uh, I, I love these brand questions <clears throat> coming in. So, so this question is asking as a brand. So how, how might your strategy with influencers or creators be different if your brand is a service rather than a physical, a physical product? Because I think we can all all imagine um, a cooking uh, cooking utensils or a food product or something. How how how, uh, how would you think about approaching a service? Or have you seen any really good examples of that? Yeah, I see so many coaches on Instagram who, whether it's like wellness coaches, like offering those services or even like therapists on Instagram, like who are creating reels. And I would say like, they actually got a lot of their clients from Instagram. And they've told me like, this is like the place to go. Even I have um, Jenny O. Holmes, she's a real estate agent and she, through her account, is able to get a lot of clients too, because they find out about the, like the home she's selling, what she's listing, how the, the opportunity and the deals that she's brought for clients because of like her work. So I think a lot of times the services are actually like the best ones, like the, I would say the best ones to promote on Instagram because of reels. For instance, I think about I know an amazing wellness coach and what she does is she offers so much free, amazing advice on Instagram, but to get like that one-on-one -on -one coaching with her, you need to opt into that service, but she does an amazing job on reels, giving us little snippets. She does like quizzes and Q and A's within the stories. And that's why I say it's so important to use all the services, surfaces on Instagram, because, because of that, I was like, wow, I need to, you know, hire her to be my coach because she's providing so much value to me already. But I know that this is just the beginning. There's even more there. So I would say it use those surfaces, you know, do the Q and A's go live with someone and do, if you are a coach and you are doing wellness, you know, coaching, do a live session and share that. I think at the end of the day, people just want to know what value that going to get if they opt into a paid version of that. And it goes back to that podcast example I gave and me subscribing to that versus not is I had already built this relationship with them in this free model and this free zone. I was locked in. So like when they came out with the paid model, I'm like, yeah, let's go because I was invested in what they were sharing. So I think it's services can definitely succeed on Instagram as well. What would you think? It, let's to uh, extend that example a little further. Where um, I'm, I'm a wellness coach, and may, maybe, maybe I have an Insta account. Maybe, maybe I don't. But um, I'd like to partner with a creator to provide my services to them, and essentially have them provide a review of me. Do you think that's a reasonable strategy? Yeah. So actually, that's. I love that you brought that up because there is um, a friend of mine, London Laed. She's actually on Shaws of Sunset um, on TV right now, oh, wow. but she's a therapist and she actually ha did one of her sessions with a creator influencer. He actually asked if he could post it on his YouTube and share. And this is really organic because he had found her on Yelp and was like, wow, like, um, can I partner with you? And she said, yeah, I would love to do this. So they actually did a therapy session together. And I saw, and I looked at it and I'm like, whoa, you like, you're thriving. You're killing it. How did you get this creator to work with you? And a lot of times it's like, if you built, she had built up this social media presence and had shared a part of herself that this creator was attracted to her personality and wanted her to be the person that gave him therapy and coached him through his journey. So that's why, yeah, a hundred percent, it does work. And when I saw it, like as an outsider, I was like, she, she is killing it in the space because she had this creator reach out and want to work with her. That's a great example. Cause I know, um, 
I know while it may be ideal for a brand, let's say, to be to be the account, it doesn't, it won't always work that way. And so the, the opportunity to create relationships with creators, time has really flown. We've only got a few minutes. So I, I want to ask you a couple uh, questions like rapid fire style, okay. if that's all right. So, <laughs> yeah. um, so the, the first question is about uh, affiliate marketing, which, you know, might be uh, clicking, you know, clicking on a link to your favorite piece of clothing and getting a percentage of, of the revenue. I know that's growing on social media. Are you seeing more influencers monetize their content that way? And, and what are your thoughts on that? Actually, that's great that you brought that up because Instagram is a launching affiliate. And, you know, creators have always used Instagram to share products they love and people trust their favorite accounts for inspiration. So we've been seeing that already. It is a place to discover new products through creators. And that's why we've created this tool to, for creators to identify new products available at checkout and share it with their followers and then get some of that money back for driving those purchases, which is really exciting. So clearly it is something that the market is seeing works and is successful. And I'm excited for um, us to get into that space too and really make it easier for people to shop directly from creators they love and give, give brands a way to partner with creators to share their products. So I think this, this is the future and it is the place to be. Totally. Questions are rolling in both both um, through the Q&A and, and directly to Tiffany and I. We're not going to be able to get to all of them, but I have some good news, which is our next sessions are with influencers and brands and uh, a combo. And so you'll have the opportunity to ask questions of, of creators, of brands and their experience with these types of relationships. And, um, and, and then and uh, just hang out with us for the next two and a half hours or so and learn. Tiffany, thanks a ton. Any last words of wisdom, either for brands or for influencers? Yeah, don't be afraid to put yourself out there and add the personal touch. I think so many people come from like that traditional background of it has to look this way or be this way, but people connect to people. I will say that a million times over. So how do you create that community and that connection where they're your best friend, they trust you, they want to be a part of this experience? I would say follow at creators, shameless plug, but that is where we go live every Thursday tomorrow at 8 a.m. to show some of the great creators who are popping off on Reels at Real Star Search. If you guys have any more questions for me, you can follow me at Tiff's Tips on Instagram. You can slide into my DMs like I recommended creators do for brands. So I'm excited to connect with all of you guys. And thank you so much for having me.